suppose. So the, the talk is called Karl Marx and the Concept of Freedom. And it's, it's, it's in, in simply in four parts. The first part is called Marx and the Critique of Capitalism. Uh, the second one is called Marx and Positive Freedom, uh, which we've already uh, um, looked at a little bit, former two speakers, uh, Ali and Chris. Um, so second one is called Marx and Positive Freedom, colon, Fulfillment of Human's Potential. The third part is looking forwards or looking back, question mark. Um, and the fourth part is individual uh, or collective, uh, question mark. Um, and um, so what I, what I want to do uh, is um, uh, just, these, these are just really some musings uh, on Marx and the, uh, and the notion of, uh, of freedom. Um, so first part, uh, Marx and the critique of, of capitalism. Um, and of, of course, Marx is, is best known uh, in, 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 in this respect when he's, when he's critiquing capitalism, when he's dissecting it, often forensically, uh, most notably, I suppose, in, uh, in, in Capital, uh, in the multi-volume Capital, um, but also in, uh, in many other um, generally thought of as the, his later works, where he does this most, uh, of course, and, and best from the uh, Communist Manifesto of uh, 1848 uh, onwards. Um, and uh, with regard to uh, freedom, um, uh, Marx's critique of capitalism includes a description of the way uh, the worker supposedly uh, enters into a free contract uh, with the capitalist, uh, but according to Marx, is in fact entering a process of, of um, profound exploitation, of course. Um, he, um, this is Marx, also speaks of the, the supposed free market, something we're all pretty familiar with now. Um, and uh, he, uh, in, the, in the Manifesto of the Communist Party of 1848, 47, 48, um, says that this is in fact a very good example, uh, i.e. the market, of bourgeois freedom. Um, and what he goes on to, to say is, quote, free selling and buying, unquote. Again, this uh, can strike quite a few chords with us, I think. He also critiques uh, bourgeois democracy as being a very thin democracy. Uh, Rousseau had, had done that very effectively, uh, of course, as well. Um, and um, Marx uh, also, uh, in his earlier writings, which I'll be dwelling on quite a lot in a minute, um, does a very effective critique of, uh, of, of human rights. Um, more generally, Marx uh, criticizes the idea that um, freedom is the, he criticizes the idea that freedom is the absence, simply the absence of, of legal and other constraints on the activities of an individual. And he points out that uh, poverty, exploitation, um, and so on, uh, mean that most people can't take advantage of these uh, supposed uh, freedoms. Now all this is, uh, this critique of capitalism um, is a, of course, a major contribution in itself. Um, it's radical, it's important, um, and it's an effective critique of, um, of bourgeois notions of freedom. Um, Marx's solution to, um, uh, to the state of affairs, which he criticizes uh, as being profoundly unfree, um, is of course the forcible and revolutionary removal um, of, of capitalism, the final stage of class society. And it's the supreme act, this, well, what, what would likely to have been a revolutionary series of acts, according to Marx, uh, would be the final act of, of liberation of, uh, of humanity. Now, this is all, this is all pretty well known, um, uh, this, this approach to freedom. And um, it, uh, I, I just wanted to say before I move on to something which I'm more concerned with, uh, I just wanted to suggest that um, this has some, this critique of, 
uh, of free freedom um, has something in um, um, which which has a closeness, um, ironically, I suppose, to, to the liberal notion of freedom. Um, it's a negative concept of freedom um, because what he's what Marx is seeking in these uh, critiques is freedom from oppression, uh, freedom from uh, exploitation, um, which, as I've said, is uh, is important uh, and uh, and significant and and in many ways in the way he couches it uh, original, particularly for the time. So. This is the second part of my, uh, my talk, uh, which, as I said, is called Marx and Positive uh, Freedom, um, um, uh, as opposed to Negative Freedom, which I've just been uh, describing. And it is the fulfillment uh, of, of human potential, if you like. That's what I've, I've subtitled it. Um, it's very much... Um, uh, the, the early writings uh, uh, in which uh, Marx um, writes about this, and in particular the, uh, the economic and philosophical manuscripts written uh, in 1844, not, not for publication as it happens, um, and they were published uh, much, much later. Um, but anyway, I want to concentrate on, the, on this less explored side of of Marx's approach to freedom, um, which can be described as, as positive freedom. And as I say, is, uh, is mainly found, but, but not only, I'll come back, I'll come back to that, uh, mainly found, but not only found uh, in the early writings, the early to mid um, 1840s. Um, so this conception of freedom, this notion of freedom uh, is human beings uh, their potential for determining their own fate in a, in a supportive environment. It's fulfillment, uh, it's flourishing, it's humans realizing their creative potential uh, in an environment of, uh, of association. In other words, they can't do this on their own. Uh, it needs to be uh, in a collective, in, a so in an associative uh, context and um, and this is very much the way in which uh, it is presented by by Marx. This is Marx on his own, incidentally, that I'm talking about at the moment uh, before he starts his uh, collaboration with uh, Engels. Um, so most fully uh, found found most fully in the the economic and philosophical manuscripts, as I said. Uh, and in particular, uh, in a part on uh, on communism, in particular, um, freedom is is the complete realization of what descri Marx describes as man's species being. Now, this is a much debated term, or amongst people who are interested in the early writings, anyway. Um, and as a translation of of the German uh, Gattungswesen. So sometimes it's um, translated as species being or human essence. We don't have an exact uh, uh, equivalent uh, in English. Um, but it is, uh, it's a celebration, if you like, it's very much a, a positive word in the, uh, in the hands or in the pen of Marx. Um, and it's the enjoyment of all that is positive uh, in, uh, in human nature. And, and its realization little by little via uh, the abolition of, of private property and, and communism. Communism then even in, in 1804, in, uh, according uh, to Marx's thinking, is the absolute key to unlocking the potential, um, uh, the, uh, of unlocking human potential. And uh, I wanted to put this quote up, but uh, technical difficulties again to prevent me from doing that. So I'll, I'll read it slowly. Uh, some of you may be familiar with it, of course. Uh, it's, a, it's fairly uh, famous. Um, and uh, this is, so he describes communism uh, as the positive supersession of private property as self-estrangement. So that's private property is self-estrangement. Uh, or alienation. Again, I'll come back to that. Uh, uh, so he continues, 
and hence communism is the true appropriation of the human essence, Gattungswesen, through and for man. It is the complete restoration of man to himself as a social, that is, human being. It is the genuine resolution of the conflict between man and nature, the true resolution of the conflict between existence and being. It is the genuine resolution of the conflict between um, existence and being. Sorry, I've, I've said that twice. Uh, it's the resolution of the conflict between freedom and necessity, between individual and species. Now there are some quite Rousseau-esque uh, sort of um, um, tones in, uh, in, in, in that passage, I think. Um, perhaps particularly um, uh, the, 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 the bits about uh, returning to human nature uh, and that sort of thing. This then is, is very much the, the, a positive as opposed to negative, you know, partly going back to Berlin, which um, uh, Ali uh, sp um, spoke about earlier. Sorry, I think it was Chris. Um, the positive approach to freedom uh, in the context of communism and the abolition of private property and the overcoming of alienation. Um, this is mainly find, found in the early writings, but it's also found um, uh, in smaller quantities elsewhere, including the German ideology. I think Ali mentioned the German ideology. Uh, also in Grundrisse, but also in Capital, which is mainly uh, concerned with quite uh, other things, of course. Um, we might, um, I'm suggesting, call this notion of freedom, this positive notion of freedom, um, borrowing Ernst Bloch's uh, terminology, we might call this warm stream uh, Marxism, or even the warm stream approach to, uh, to freedom. Um, whereas in, uh, in, in Marx's more political economic writings, and quite a lot of Engels writings actually, uh, who was, uh, I guess, more of a, uh, uh, more of what we conventionally think of as a scientist than, uh, than Marx. Um, we might think of the political economy and the dissection um, of capitalism in, in, uh, in capital, for example, as cold stream Marxism. This, these are, as I say, Ernst Bloch's uh, terminologies. Um, the third part of my talk then, um, uh, the, the third and fourth parts of my talk are sort of, um, they're, they're a little bit more analytical, and I'm going to be asking whether there are uh, inherent contradictions um, in what Marx uh, says about um, uh, freedom. And so the third part of the talk is called looking forwards or looking back, question mark. So this is the first possible conflict, uh, inherent conflict or contradiction, which I, I want to suggest in, in, um, uh, in Marx's approach to freedom. Um, and then I'll comment on them. Is Marx then, is he trying to have it both ways? When he talks about, uh, I'm, I'm simplifying obviously, um, uh, and, and possibly some people might say distorting, but I, I hope I'm not. I'm simplifying though. When I say um, he's attempting to um, argue that there is a, that uh, in finding freedom, uh, human beings are returning to elements of a natural human state, whilst at the same time developing a new form uh, of freedom, and even a new form, he suggests in some places, uh, of human nature via communism, via the abolition of uh, private property, via the overcoming of um, alienation. Um, Marx is certainly clear, uh, I, I, in, in my view anyway, particularly in the early writings, um, that under communism there will be um, a what he describes, and he obviously this is the English translation, but there will be a restoration of a return to a richer and freer experience for human beings, which they once enjoyed. That's the implication, um, and where 
they will be in the future once again put in touch what it means uh, to be fully human. There is then, I'm suggesting, a, a harking back uh, to the past. Um, Marx is, of course, also, as, as I've suggested, clear that the future, that it, that it is the future that he's interested in, the future under communism, and it's under communism um, that, uh, that society, communism, will hold the real key to human fulfillment. And I use that word um, deliberately as an expression of the positive uh, view of uh, uh, freedom. Um, and under communism, we will see, um, uh, and this is Marx and Engels writing in the German ideology, the end of prehistory, quote unquote. Um, communism then allows not only for liberation from extreme alienation, um, I won't dwell on that and define it perhaps, um, won't, but also for the first time it allows human beings to overcome their subjugation uh, to nature. Um, so nature is both um, positive and negative. Um, here he um, talks about the subjugation of nature, meaning um, hunger, poverty, even war, and so on. So communism will allow freedom from hunger, poverty, war, and so on. And all this is done not only by um, the force of political organization, um, but also very importantly, uh, by the development of, of what he describes as the forces of production, um, which, which include anyway, uh, advances in, in science and technology, which can be uh, extremely liberating, according to Marx. So is this notion um, of the realization of human nature and freedom, um, can we really, uh, this harking back in particular to uh, what we might call a state of nature, um, is this really some sort of secularized salvation, you know, inspired possibly by, uh, more, more by Feuerbach and Hegel than, than by um, the later uh, development of, of Marx and Engels' uh, thought. Um, is the notion of Gattungswesen, species being human essence, uh, is it really a, a, a hangover from a, um, from a, a more, even a more spiritualist approach to, uh, to, to human beings. Um, I, I tend to think that it, uh, uh, that it might be. And, and so I have uh, reservations about how far um, uh, we can go really uh, with this. It also raises questions about the difference between human animals uh, and, and other animals. Um, and whether there is a, 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 a substantial a difference, uh, as Marx seems to suggest when he talks about uh, species being and so on. Very briefly, uh, uh, in my fourth um, uh, part of, of this talk, um, which is called individual or collective, question mark, I went, want to ask whether there is a, also a contradiction um, between, on the one hand, the individual freedoms, which Marx certainly often writes about, um, and on, on the other hand, the, the profound emphasis on collective action, and as I've said, associative action um, in the realization uh, of freedom and emancipation. Um, in the German ideology, um, Marx talks about, quote, the all-round development of individuals, unquote, and, quote, free development of individuals, uh, unquote. Um, as late as uh, in Capital, this is, I think, volume three, uh, three um, he advocates, quote, a society in which the full and free development of every individual forms the ruling principle, unquote. Marx certainly did not, despite what others might have argued, did not ignore 
the importance uh, of the individual, individual freedoms, uh, individual fulfillment. <clears throat> um, it might be suggested that, that uh, Marx comes close to, to bourgeois notions of freedom when, uh, when, when putting the emphasis on this. I, I don't think that is the case, uh, actually. And I, I do think that the, uh, this does seem to be a, a realistic um, approach to the relationship between uh, individual freedom and collective organization and indeed collective freedom. <clears throat> Certainly one of the main problems of the interpretation of Marx uh, as applied in the USSR and elsewhere was and is the trampling on individual freedoms uh, for the sake of quote unquote the collective. Um, in fact very often the collective uh, became uh, the bureaucracy. Uh, that this is me, me uh, opining of course. Um, in the Communist Manifesto, Marx and Engels suggest that there will be, quote, an association in which the free development of each is the free development of all. Uh, this is quite a famous um, uh, quotation, of course. And the freedoms which they're talking about would go well beyond the bourgeois notions of, of freedom, um, which, as Marx, uh, as I pointed out earlier, um, uh, suggested were meaningless. The bourgeois notions of freedom were meaningless in the context of class society, massive inequality, and oppressions of many different kinds. Rather, it is for the first time ever, according to Marx and Engels, the rational approach to the organization of society, as opposed to the anarchy of the market and the injustices and alienation that goes with it, uh, that allows for the flourishing uh, of individual, as uh, of the individual, as well as the development of collective talents. And there I will leave it. Thanks very much, everyone. I hope you heard all that.